you took in from that curriculum, all right? You're gonna give feedback on what you took from it. You're also going to have an opportunity to do some sort of discussion scenario with the tables you're sitting at, all right? But before we get started with it, I wanna introduce you to a few people, all right? So first we have John Dullahan from Altice. Um, he represents them, and he has a few words that he wants to talk to you guys about to start. Great, thanks. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, so, as Richard Settler said, I'm from Altice. Proud to be here on behalf of Altice, which is also the provider of Optimum Services. Uh, I want to thank the school as well uh, for participating in the Altice Connects program. Altice, we as a company are proud to be a part of the communities, helping student success like yourself with programs like this to help with education, innovation, and digital wellness. But the real reason here today is also to congratulate you as students for participating in the, in the program and completing the program. So congratulate, congratulations to all of you for completing it and beginning your journey to being a good digital citizen. So let's give yourself a round of applause. We also have to congratulate you on winning the Digital Connect Photo Contest. So that's why we have these cool headphones here, which we'll keep in the class, uh, that go to all of you. So again, congratulations on winning that contest as well. Um, and so we're going to um, sit and break up in groups, as you already see here, do some fun activities, just to get a sense of what you guys learned through the program. In a little while, hopefully we'll see, uh, have a special guest here who's going to come and say a few words. Uh, she'll be coming shortly. So we can begin in the groups, and uh, thanks again for all your participation. All right, so guys, yeah, if you look around, you see there's some cool stuff over here. I mean, obviously, you got the headphones donated to you guys now for your class set. All right, we have these cool gift bags in here that you guys will be getting at the end of the period. All right, and it actually has a pretty cool offer from Altis, I believe, for your families in terms of internet sign up. So if you guys are interested, definitely show it to your parents when you go home. Um, but we're going to get started with the group discussions right now, okay? And we have John over here from Everfy, okay? He's, he works with Everfy, which is a company that's um, provided us with other types of curriculum online. We did the healthy relationships last year. Okay, you guys, when you were in fourth grade, I believe you did um, the STEM program, having to do with the New York Rangers, all right? So John's company has worked with us to do that as well. We have Kristen from Altice, all right? She's been working with us and has been just talking to me this whole time about setting up this great event for you guys today. And obviously, John um, will be with the group as well. So basically, we're all going to pick a group. We'll sit with you guys. We'll talk about the discussion questions you have. And then at the end of class, we're going to present our findings from the discussions. All right, does anyone have any questions? But anything we're doing today? All right, anyone have any feedback? <laughs> you guys are shy. All right, we'll get, we'll get, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get going. And uh, right now, then, um, I guess if volunteers want to pick a table, sit at a table. All right. Um, yeah, I'll go over here. Jonathan, you want to Great. Thank you. All right. What's your name? All right. Mr. D, Mr. Small, go to. You guys start talking to your own Joya? Joya. Joya. What's scenario? Latavia? I should have guessed that. You know why? What's that scenario? What was it? One more time. Kofi? Very nice. Nice meeting you. I'm Jonathan. Uh, I actually just uh, got in from D.C. Everfi is down in D.C. and I'm really excited about being here with you guys. We, we love the Connect Smart program. Uh, it's something that's really important. You know, digital wellness and, and how you guys interact online is so critical uh, to your future. How many of you, this is going to sound like a really stupid question, but just go with it. How many of you are using online already? How many of you use social media? How many of you post stuff online? Before you go into the questions, what's wrong with this? Just starting? Okay. And how many of you know how long that stuff is going to stay online? Maybe forever. Forever. You know, I was just reading an article yesterday that businesses are now stopping looking at resumes and now starting to look at people's social media profiles instead. That all the things that you post when you're young, guess what? They are going to look at it later. I was lucky because I was before that time where my stuff wasn't there. It's something I didn't have to worry about. But it's something that you guys have to worry about quite a bit, right? Mm -hmm. So let's let's jump on into this uh, scenario. There's a lot of really cool scenarios that we've listed. 
in the Connect Smart program, you guys went through a lot of different scenarios, right? Yeah. What was your favorite one? Just wondering. Um, what was my, yours? My favorite was when, um, how does it affect when you use social media too much and you don't have the outside, you don't go yeah. outside and play? That, it's, that is really, uh, really impactful. It, it really is. You know, there's a, everything, there's a good balance between a lot of it and too much of it. and. Good amount versus not versus zero. So, what about you, David? Uh, when sh sharing your information with different with different people, like the wrong people on the internet, you can't share information. Yeah, that's hard, isn't it? I I get emails all the time. I have to think about who is this person. What am I going to share with them? You know, is this person someone who is just trying to get information from me? Uh, it's something that I'm sure you guys get emails and get the same thing. You get uh, Twitter messages from people who want to be friends but don't really want to be friends. They just want your information, right? So let's let's jump into this one real quick. So during soccer practice, Brandon Tripp fell over when trying to take a shot on goal. The way happened to be watching from the sideline. Oh, I love this one. And recorded Brandon falling down. We all like people falling down. So we talked about the possible consequences However, that Sarah could face. What were some of them again? Some of the consequences. So what are some of the consequences? You can get sued. All right. What else? Zero on the project. On a permanent record for plagiarism. Good. She can get kicked out of school. Yeah. Things like that. Like, it's, it's not worth it. So, I mean, as long as you understand if it's too good to be true, it's probably not worth it. All right? So, have any of you guys ever dealt with a friend trying to do this online? Yourself? Okay. What, what happened? You, you, you found all the material online. You're like, oh, this is good. I might as well just use it. Change a few words. Right? Yeah, so, but again, but now you look at this, is it going to make you think twice about it? Yeah, probably, because it, in the end, is it more the consequences of the crap following you? I mean, and then what's another thing that's important? If you're always looking at your phone, what are you taking away from? Life. Life, education, right? Talking to people, right? So digital addiction takes away from speaking with people, right? And education and life, as you said. That's very true. They make, I think they make classes now that help with that blue light. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's right. There, there's a lot when you're online. Too much. Well, it's just like the ownership company. I thought they just changed the name. I remember, like I said, Autism Optimum turned into Autism. Uh, yeah, we yeah, going back and forth. It was like uh, up to empowered by all T's and then it went to the Yeah, essentially they're one and the same. <laughs> and now we've seen that because we go to a lot of schools and have different programs for different. This is one example of that. There's other programs that we have that focus on charity work and other things, um, essay contests, that sort of thing. So if you guys ever you leave your teacher or someone or just settle with other options and have the programs, you guys ever want to get involved with something else? There's other fun stuff to win. I know with the charity champions is an essay contest. Um, we have Hispanic Heritage Month too. And there's another contest we win an iPad. We kind of cool stuff too, along with learning kids as well. So it's a lot of cool stuff. So you guys use the internet at home for like schoolwork and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my, my daughter's 11, she'll be 12, and she's now using it a lot for like research and stuff. And when I was growing up, it was like, it's almost like you were cheating when you were using the internet. They were like, you gotta go to the library, waste your time for all that. But now you don't have to do that, so you can connect directly to the internet, which is cool. Do you guys have to do like homework using the internet? Like you're, you're sometimes. Yeah, we don't. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So should Jasmine respond to the message she received? No. No, make a, no right? Yeah, I make the situation worse. Yeah. And like two wrongs don't make right. I make the situation worse and two wrongs don't make right. Right, right. On, on social media, can you block somebody? Yeah. So should she maybe block that person? Very good. Um, can Amanda help Jasmine in this situation? And if so, how can she help her? Right. That's true. What about telling somebody about it? An adult? Right? Okay. Are there any strategies Jasmine and Amanda can take to help prevent future cyberbullying incidents at their school? What do they do? Do they make a music video out of your name? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so, or, or, or it's just like it's not supposed to be that at all. That's right. And, when, and could the two of them like promote From good behavior and, and discourage? Um, so obviously we have a visitor in here, right? We have our assemblyman Nader Sage. All right, he's here. He, won't, he wanted to ha have a few words for you guys, talk to you guys a little bit about digital wellness and all that you guys have accomplished completing this program. Excellent, and I just want you to stop by and uh, really uh, check and see what's been going on. And I've been always an advocate of wellness. I have a family that's involved for many, many years in healthcare and medicine and, and good nutrition and wellness. And uh, from what I understand, you guys are doing a lot in that area. And especially, I understand you're all eighth graders. Now, as eighth graders, you're really at a stage in your life where you got to really be focused on, you know, academic success. You got to be focused on preparing yourself for the next level in education, which is high school, and beyond that, colleges. And the importance of making sure what you do in eighth grade and as you move on to high school, that you start putting together the skills that allows you to really start focusing on colleges and focusing on what really interests you in life, what major you like. And very often, these are the steps that prepare you to start thinking about your future and a career. And uh, there's many careers out there. There's many careers in healthcare, in the legal field, in technology, in business. And it's really up to you to say to yourself, you know, what do I like? You know, what interests me in life? And, and make sure that you build the skills that allow you to prepare yourself for that. Now, part of that is also making sure you stay healthy. A lot of times we put a lot of effort and time into planning for our lives and our careers. And, and sometimes, you know, we get stumbles. We get bumps in the road because we're not healthy enough. And a lot of times it's within our goal, our hands, to determine if we take the initiatives to stay healthy. Now staying healthy is nutrition, making sure that whatever we enjoy, you know, we enjoy in moderation. You know, I like sweets, but I've learned over the years, if I don't watch myself, you know, you get heavy. And if you get heavy, you start worrying as we get older about uh, high blood pressure and diabetes. And, and very often, if you live with high blood pressure and diabetes, and some of us <laughs> probably see that with our families and see it with our parents and grandparents who may have diabetes or high blood pressure, and then it causes cardiovascular disease very often, you know, with heart problems. And uh, it's not a healthy thing. So, I often tell as many young men and women, you know, start thinking about that early on and making sure that uh, we focus on good health, good nutrition, you know, whatever we enjoy, you know, enjoy and have some of that, but in moderation. Too often, whether it's having an ice cream or having something, a donut or having, you know, it's enjoyable, but it's bad for you if you have too much, you know. so. That's where moderation comes in and plays a role. And, uh, and I just wanted to learn a little bit more about 
what, uh, what you're being taught, what you're learning, and really see as a state assemblyman, you know, how the program works. Because as state assembly people, as we represent, in my case, I represent the city of Yonkers in Albany. And being a member of the New York State Assembly, I'm part of the legislation, part of the governmental body at the state level that makes laws and makes policy and really sets the stage for how New York State moves on on many issues. And, and in all honesty, New York being a very progressive state <coughs> sets the stage for how the rest of the nation goes. So, so and very often as, as a state representative, you know, how do I learn or how do I make decisions or put policy into place? It's from listening to guys like you. You know, I go to schools, I go to senior citizen centers and healthcare agencies, and I say, what's going on? And sometimes they'll tell you, this is going on, that's really great, let's do more of it. And sometimes they tell me, hey, you know, we have a problem, we have an issue. The way the policy is, the way the law is, the way the procedure is, it's not working for us. Can you change it? And very often I'll research it, and I'll have my staff members and professionals around will look at that and say, hey, if we can promote and sponsor a new legislation, new laws, and, and they become policy, then we've done a wonderful thing for many people by changing the policy. We've done it with criminal justice. I don't know if you guys listen to the news. New York State has done many wonderful things with criminal justice, with bail reform, where where individuals that uh, get in trouble have opportunities for second chances and opportunities to really improve their lives rather than staying in jail or, or not having those opportunities. I recently put a bill, anybody knows about autism? Yeah. Okay, there was, there, was, uh, there was a lot of discussions, people that really reached out and they said, you know, we, we have a concern because individuals, adults, that get driver license, that have autism, really have a serious problem. So if they have autism, they're very effective, they're very bright, but sometimes there's difficulties in accepting commands or directives, right? So what happens, and then I find out 34%, 34% of adults with autism have driver's license. They go to work, they go to school, right? So what are, what are their concerns? Their concern is, hey, if I'm driving and God forbid I get stopped by a police officer, law enforcement, or God forbid there's an accident, an emergency staff, right? What happens? Very often the law enforcement doesn't know the person that they stopped has autism. So they may say, hey, give me your driver's license, give me your papers, give me whatever, get your hands off the wheel, you know, stand back. And very often a person with autism is having difficulty because of communication or the style. And then the police officer thinks, wow, this person is being disobedient or this person's being disrespectful or not abiding by my commands. And then it can escalate into a problem. You understand? So. This is something that we recently submitted because we felt, hey, this is something that's healthy. Another quick example, recently, last week, we submitted a bill because a lot of the, a lot of the dog pounds, uh, they were putting away animals because uh, people weren't, weren't going out and purchasing you know, pets, right? So, what we did, we put a bill that allows for a tax credit where if somebody goes and buys a dog or buys a cat at the pound, right, they get $125, which is usually the cost for the pet. So that becomes tax deductible, right? So it encourages a lot of people to say, hey, at least I can get a deduction, and maybe that may increase the number of people that are buying pets buying dogs and cats, and, and the end result is, you know, there's 
there's less of a number of these pets that are being put away. You know, so these are maybe small examples. And how did these recommendations come to someone like myself as a state representative? They come from talking to young men and women uh, as a school principal for many years. Some of the best recommendations of how to improve the school came from talking to kids and saying, you know, sometimes as young as kindergarten kids that say to me, Dr. Sage, you know, there's a better way to do something, and how, how is that? Or sometimes from teachers or sometimes from parents that have good recommendations. So the message is, you know, speak up. If you have, if you have something on your mind, speak up. I think we're living in a society where all of us, from your teachers to your administrators to your representatives, we're saying speak up, let your voices be heard, and focus on your future. And don't ever think, well, I have obstacles in my life. I have ups and downs. Everybody had ups and downs. Anybody you talk to, even the most successful people, will say, you know what? There was times when there was a real down in my life, but I never gave up. And, and what I tell everybody is life will have a lot of ups and downs, right? But as long as they're going like this, right? Which means you, you learn from experiences, you acknowledge that it's common, it's okay that people sometimes have difficulties in their life. But that shouldn't ever stop anybody from saying, you know what, I'm gonna surpass that, I'm gonna look forward, and I'm gonna move on and improve myself. So it's my pleasure to be here. I wanna come here to learn from you and understand about the program, and to really, I'll, I'll leave some cards for the assembly with your teacher. You know, if anybody has recommendations, ideas, whatever, as far as uh, policy, procedures, you wanna visit the assembly office, you wanna see how government functions, let me know. So I'll give Thank these you to your so teacher, much. and wish you guys the very best. Thank you very much. Thank you. We are going to now just dive into these discussion questions, all right, so we can showcase what we've learned from this curriculum. So let's go in order. Let's start with group number one. Um, does anyone want to read the discussion question? Go ahead, Ariana. Um, yep. The, no, sorry, the, the scenario first. Um, Jamie recently got the license, and her parents are letting her borrow their car to go to the mall with her friends. Michelle and Mackenzie... Michelle McKenzie. Jamie picks up her friends at their houses, puts on their favorite radio station, nice and loud, and they hit the road to the mall. Jamie starts to drive towards the mall and realizes she doesn't quite remember how to get there, so she pulls out her phone while she's driving to enter the address in her navigation. All right, so group one, if you're Michelle or McKenzie, how would you react to Jamie using her phone while driving? What would you guys talk about? Does anyone want to volunteer how they answer it? Um, Go ahead, Lewis. We would tell her to stop. We would, you know, we would tell her to put the phone down, or we could say, oh, you could give it to us. We could put the address in. All right, so is it group one, is this a common problem, you think, out there with drivers, with yeah. taking their phones out? Yeah. All right, so obviously it's very important for the passenger to step up there. If they see it going on, put a stop to it, all right? They're being responsible not only for themselves in that car, but the stranger who might be driving the car in front of them that might get hit by them because the driver behind them is looking at their phone. One other question from there. Um, how can technology benefit a driver if they use it properly while in their car? So what are some examples of technology benefiting a driver? Justin, go ahead. Uh, like navigation, so you can figure out where you're going. All right, helps you get, helps you get, get around to where you want to go. Anything else? Yes. Um, if there's tra traffic or like there's an accident ahead, you, you can find other routes to where you want to go. Great. Technology is amazing. All right, it, it's, it gives you information right at your fingertips at all times. So that right there, that that's helped in terms of when you're driving around. Mr. Nader, when I see you around, it means it's good news. That's right. Okay, and those kids inside, today are learning about how to deal with the, the internet, the responsibilities, the dangers, 
and uh, the good and the bad of the internet because the internet it's a it's a powerful tool yeah. as long as it's used properly that's and correct. that's what Altis and CSEE are doing with this curriculum what do you think about that I think it's terrific I think you know as a legislator and as a educator for many years uh, we see the benefits of the internet but we also recognize the internet can be very harmful uh, too many of our young men and women are on the internet maybe more than we think they should be and uh, and there's safety concerns uh, there's social emotional there's a lot of situations that if uh, our children are not taught to how to use the benefits of the internet and how to be careful the in internet uh, becomes a widespread of a flow of information and communications and unfortunately many people may abuse the internet and infuse the airwaves and really put out information that could be very dangerous and detrimental to young men and women and adults also. So I appreciate Altice that has taken the lead in saying, you know what, we're going to reach out to school age children and really work with them and show them how they can utilize the benefits. The discussions that are taking place in the classroom are geared to educate and having these young men and women, eighth graders, realize the benefits and the concerns and how to address and how to better utilize the internet so that they can utilize it to the fullest without being entrapped into potentially harmful information for them. We see information, for example, where kids are being bullied and misled and the increase of suicide among young, young men and women. This is really tra tra a tragedy for society. So again, as an educator, we want to put a stop to the negative end and understand that the internet, it's a new wave, it's a new uh, style of communication, it's moving on, so how do we work with it and address it and make sure it works in a proper way. Now, Mr. Mader, education, academics, and how you are raised at home, to me, it comes hand to hand. Definitely. Now, once these kids go home, and they are, at, you know, with their parents using the internet, what is your recommendation for the parents? Well, I recommend these children, of course, uh, like we said, we spoke to them about you have a voice, make sure your voice is heard. Some of the best recommendations that adults have and legislators and administrators and teachers come from the children we work and teach. So their responsibility is to take the lessons that are learned today and the skills that are learned to go home and communicate with their parents and try to give their parents and their siblings at home, their brothers and sisters and relatives and their friends the information they've learned because communications and lessons learned are more effective when they're expanded to the home and to the community and everywhere else there's people that communicate. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Lewis Latavian. Latavian. Raul. Raul. Yolanda.